Welcome to using Dijkstra's algorithm to navigate BC tables. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, if you've been a uh, viewer on the channel for a while, you know that whenever I go traveling uh, and have to sit on a plane for hours and hours, uh, I usually build stuff. Uh, whether it's usable or not, that's always a discussion, but I build stuff and um, I want to show you what occupied my mind uh, on a plane home from the, the Direction Conference. Um, and let me try to explain because this is slightly convoluted. But in the simple object designer, um, we have the concept of a field transfer, meaning that you know when you when you enter a customer on, on a sales header, uh, then the customer's address is copied to the address field on the sales header, sales who build to and all that good stuff. Um, and and in 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 BC and in the simple object designer, the concept is called a field transfer. So the field is transferring from one table to another uh, the value of the field, um, and uh, and then you know it can transfer from the sales header to line, from line to journal, journal to entries, and, and, and so on. There's pathways. Um, and um, the way the simple object designer is built is that I spent an awful lot of time going through and locating what events will move data between two tables and kind of build a system for that. Um, and uh, in, in, in the world of computer science, that is what we call a graph, um, meaning that we have uh, vertexes, which are, are the tables, and then we have edges, which are the connection between the tables. Um, and what I was thinking about on the plane, sorry, uh, was the, but, but uh, let's say user, creates a field on on a, on a customer and then wants that field to appear on the customer ledger entries. What is the path, what, how, how, what tables do, do we need to, to make sure that uh, this field is, all, all different tables the field is in and what are the events that we need to actually to do that? So in the simple object designer, right now you can do it one step at a time, and then you figure out the path. But but since this is a graph, and we 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 have a starting point and an ending point, then suddenly we're in the territory of you know the shortest route and finding a, finding a path to a graph. Just like when you're on Google Maps and, and, and you click on Copenhagen and you want to go to Berlin, then it will tell you the way. There's an algorithm to look through the graph of roads and connections and all that good stuff. Um, so let, let, me, let me show you something here. Uh, where's my screen? Well, here it's here. So you might remember if you are a subscriber to the channel. Otherwise, I suggest subscribing, of course. And a while back, I did a couple of videos on drawing graphs. Um, um, and one of the the uh, the libraries I used was one called Mermaid.js. So that's the same thing here. So here is the graph of the at least when i took the copy of this data the 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 pathways that the simple object designer knows um, and we can see that well we can go from a customer to a sales header and then we can go from the sales header that was actually laid directly to the item journal line to item ledgers we can go from sales header to sales invoice and from and so on. So there's there's a bunch of uh, of different paths here um, where we can go. And um, uh, this might not even be complete, but.
but that's a different a different topic um so this this is a graph this is what in computer science is known as a graph um so what we can do is that we could let me just so in this case i have created a um so this is this is the code that will generate the uh, the mermaid graph um, and there's not a video on that so I'm not going to go into details with it but basically see there's two two variables that gets built one calls output one and one calls output two one des describes the vertexes and output two describes the connection so then mermaid figure out how to how to draw it so that's pretty neat but the interesting thing up here is this function. So transfer dot find route from the ship to address table to the item that you enter table. So if I run this again, I see what is happening. Ship to address to cell setter to item journal line to item ledger entry, which was the one that we just examined here. So to get from this one. So that one, let me actually see if we can make. So the graph is right now just sizing. So going from this one to that one, to that one, to that one. Um, and I think it, it also, did it say that the distance is three? Let's just try to do that again. I think it's called test page or something like that. It is, distance is three. So by now I have told that the distance between all tables are one. So one, two, three. So, so the algorithm seems to be be working. Uh, so let's take a quick. So I'm not gonna spend this video on 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 uh, explaining how the Dijkstra's algorithm work work in in details. There's a bunch of videos you can uh, go check out. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna kind of show you how I ALLIS it. I don't know if that, that's not a word. How I uh, implemented it in AL. Anyway, so I have a, 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 a table called transfer, which has connection for source table to a destination table. Um, so with that, on that, I created a, a function called find route. And uh, find route is is doing a couple of things. Uh, we can see that in actually it's calling a shortest distance uh, Dijkstra start table end table a matrix and a route which is an output. So we can see for each table number in route, go find the table and build the string with the message we saw with with the names and and give us the distance also that. Is, that it's outputting. So the input to this function is a matrix. So what is the matrix? But well, we can see the matrix up here is a dictionary. And it's a dictionary of integer, comma, another dictionary, uh, which is kind of cool. I think there's also actually a, a, a video on, on on dictionaries and lists, uh, so you can go check that out uh, also. But it, the idea here is that this matrix, so this will be a table number, and then there is a list of connections to other uh, tables with this and the length. So, uh, so table, comma a another dictionary with all the distances to other tables from this one um, so the first thing is that's happening is that we run through this table to get all the connections we we built the matrix so if we we don't have a starting entry f in the matrix for the source table we'll add it to the source table uh, and, and right now we'll just add an empty. You see the edges here, we'll add an empty one for that. And 
if the destination table is not known either, we'll also in the matrix add that and an empty there. Uh, in case it already exists, we will then get it again. Uh, so the one we just set up here, we actually just get again. But if it already exists, we'll get it with whatever uh, connection it had the last time. And then it looks in the edges to see, do we have a connection to the destination? So we have a record that says source table, destination table, source table, destination table, source table, destination table. So now we go look to see in the edge dictionary if we have a connection to that one. So the the one I call edge is, is this one. Uh, and if not, we add it to that one and then we update the matrix for this one again and go to the next record in our connection table. So after all that is done, we um, we have a matrix as a dictionary. So we have a, a the fastest possible way in memory uh, of, of holding this information. And since, so, so there's a lot of different algorithms to do this is dextrous, uh, dextrous, I also say dextrous uh, algorithm is, is like one of the oldest, the classic one. And, and with the amount of data we have here, uh, it's not an issue and it's, it's, it's guaranteed to actually give the right answer. There are other algorithms that are in, 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 at the price of less memory consumption and less compute power will uh, might get it wrong, but uh, not in this case. Anyway, so we have the matrix now. So we call into the function we have down here. Um, and um, it keeps track. It, it tries to, it's, it's, it started somewhere and then it looks to all the connection they have and, and it, it slowly builds up a, uh, a, a table with the shortest distance to every other point uh, in, uh, in, in, in the matrix. Um, so it starts by setting because that's a high enough number that the distance to everything is uh, um, the max int um, because we will never reach that. Then it says, okay, the inst the distance to where we're starting, no, is zero, right? Uh, and then it starts running through this. And, and, and I want to show you one little thing here. Um, so you see that, so the problem is that we want to iterate. So, so we, we have something where, you know, table 18 is customer, 21 is customer, radio entry, so on. So we have the, uh, these, um, the matrix, the index in the matrix, uh, are table numbers but we need to run through everything in, in, in them. So that is not really a, a dictionary operation, but what we can do is that we can ask to get, um, well, hang on, let me do this right here. Keys. So we, we can, uh, we can we can ask to get the um, all the the indexes that are in 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 the dictionary as a list instead, so we can we can run through it, um, and and then we can use that, so we can say for j equal one to the number of nodes, uh, and then simply go through and get that specific node in the key, um, in the keys list. So we actually, we have a dictionary and then we create another list to be able to run through it manually. And then you can see we have the, tr the two loops here. So we loop through all the notes uh, and then for everyone, we loop through all the connection it has to others. And then we're slowly building up this matrix of the shortest distance. And um, 
at the end, we also built the path uh, of so the shortest distance to every point added together, it will become the route. Um, so we can we can build up the one called path, and then we exit simply exit the distance uh, from from our end node, um, and. The result is that we we get a route through the data. Um, the reason I said this might not be actually solving what I was I was thinking about was that um, the shortest route through the data model is not necessarily the right way for data to travel. Um, so, uh, so I might need to if you, if I have a simple object assigned, you say, okay, I want this field on a customer, then I need to go to the customer later entry. Then I need to find all the paths uh, that this can potentially travel in order to populate uh, everything between those two. Um, so, I guess that's the next job for me, which I haven't done here and. Uh, I think this video we get way too long if we started working in, into those details, but that's how I spend my flight between Orlando and Vancouver. Um, trying to figure out if uh, I could apply some classic computer science algorithm to uh, to Business Central to make life easier for some of my users. If you like videos like this, I suggest you check out this one. There's more AL hacking here. I'm sure you're going to like it. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.